Hey everyone, welcome back, and for this video I'm going to be, going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, this is actually my review of Ruby Episode 1 now. Yeah, I'm doing Ruby now. I know there's already seven episodes out, so I'm kind of, you know, behind things here. Alright, but... I will try to get caught up as quickly as I can so I can do, you know, so that I'm caught up with the reviews and shouldn't be too, shouldn't take me too long to hopefully because the episodes are shorter, at least this first episode, I'm not sure if that'll be a trend, but, you know, whatever. Anyways, though, let's get into this review, though. First off, before I read the uh, synopsis here, I just want to, I just want to, Describe a few technicalities. First off, this is a CG animated work, all right, and it's not actually not an anime. It's in uh, I'm not sure where it was made by. No, it's not an anime. It wasn't made in Japan. It's not an anime, all right, but it's in anime style though, which is why I'm really interested in it. Now, the animation quality is kind of hard to explain. There's times like during the fights when it's amazing. But there's other times, like like this one scene that I'll mention, which is horrible. Like, there's the scene where Ruby is eating a cookie, and she literally touches the cookie with a flat hand, and slides her hand across it, and then flings it into her mouth all, all at once. Her fingers aren't even moving at all, and it looks fucking horrible, and I know it's just such a horrible thing, her eating a fucking cookie, but... It's there, and I notice it, and I'm, therefore I have to mention it, that that's just the way I am. Okay? I'm sorry. So, yeah, that, that was horrible, and there's other things that are common in anime, like lip flaps, which, are real, which were, were really common in this episode. You know, instead of mouths moving every which way every once in a while, there were just lip flaps, which is really common in a lot of animes as well. Alright, and... So yeah, the animation is definitely a mixed bag. Um, I really hope that it improves on places where it fucked up at in this episode in the future, though. Because I was not impressed at some point, such as that cookie-eating thing. But other things, like the fights, look beautiful. And also, I really love the art style, too. It's not something that I, I, don't, I think I've ever seen in anime, so... I mean, I'm sure it exists, but I... I really did love the art style as well. And the voice act... First off, I want to say, since this is not anime, I I can actually read the first version and understand it without having to read subtitles, <laughs> which is nice, you know? But anyways, though, um, the uh, voice acting is a mixed bag as well. Like, there's some things that are okay. Like, I really like the uh, actress that portrays Ruby. I think she did a very good job. And Ruby's sister is pretty good as well. Um, but, I don't know, the actor that played those random thugs in black, uh, actor or actors, you know, whatever, I thought they could have definitely done a better job. And their leader, that guy in white, I think he could have done, I think the guy who portrayed him could have done a better job, job as well. So the voice acting was definitely hit or miss in this episode as well. Alright, so anyways, let's get into the to the, uh, synopsis before I go on any further, right? In the prologue, the narrator explains how humans originated into to this world and began a battle against the creatures known as the Grim. Humans eventually discovered a power called dust and used it to repel the Grim and build civilizations, but the narrator warns that this time of peace may come to an end. Cutting to the present day, Ruby is in a dust shop when a group of men led by Roman Torchwick attempt to rob it. Upon no noticing them, she fights and defeats every member of, of the group except for Torchwick who heads to the roof of a building to flee in an, an airship. He launches an attack at Ruby after getting on board, but a blonde woman arrives to protect her. A woman on 
A woman on the airship then begins attacking, allowing the airship to escape. Ruby is later scolded by the blonde woman, a huntress named Glinda Goodwitch. Glinda reluctantly introduces Ruby to Professor Ozpin of Beacon Academy. When Ruby muses to him about her aspiration to also become a huntress, he accepts her he accepts her to Beacon Academy, which is, which is the academy that her sister's in. In the final scene, Ruby joins her sister Yang on the airship in transit to their new school. So, yeah, that's pretty much what happened in this episode. So, yeah, the episode was just over 12 minutes. So, these are, at least this first episode was very short, and I suspect that the others will be as well. Alright, so, um, yeah, it's nothing, not, so, yeah, not a whole lot happened, but what did happen was pretty good, but it wasn't fantastic. Like I mentioned before, there were flunks, like the animation was hit or miss and the voice acting was hit or miss. Um, I, I, I also felt that maybe it should have been a full-length episode because I was left with a lot of questions in this episode, at, by the end of this episode, but I really hope that they elaborate on more later on. Alright, like, a lot. <laughs> Alright, and... In it, however, things I did like were, of course, the fight scenes were really fucking good. That's really when the animation shined. Alright. And that's pretty much the hi the highest point, though. The music's also pretty damn good. I had got to find out that song, what that song was that Ruby was listening to with her headphones. It sounds so fucking awesome. Alright, one thing, another thing that I really didn't like was that when they were fighting, like, the fight scenes were awesome, but when, uh, Goodwitch and that Torch guy were fighting on the rooftop and the when he was in the blimp and she was on the roof, or airship in the roof, it, I don't know, like, it, the scenes went by so fast it was difficult for me to know what was, to see what was going on, alright, and I felt that was kind of a flaw, I think they should not really slow down the fight scenes, but make them more recognizable, I think is the best way to describe, to describe it, alright, so that I know what's going on better next time, you know, instead of like a scene of the fight flashing by, and me in my mind wondering, like, what the fuck just happened, you know? So, yeah, but anyways, overall, this episode was still good. It's a fairly decent start to the, uh, to the, uh, series, and I hope, but I do hope that it gets better in the future. So, yeah, anyways, overall, hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.